Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. This is part two of my Recycle Bin video series. No, we're not putting access in the Recycle Bin. We're making a Recycle Bin so we can drop records in there in case you might need them in the future. This is part two, so if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch that first and then come on back. All right, so in part one, we got to this point where we listed all of the fields in our table and their values, and now we've got all this in one string. Now we need to make a table, a recycle bin table, to drop this information into so that in the future, if we need it, we can go in there and get it. So let's create table design, and I want to keep this so it's table agnostic. In other words, I can drop records from any table in here. It doesn't matter. So it's going to be just a recycle bin ID. That's my auto number. We're going to put in here a, uh, a deleted date, right? What date was the record actually deleted from the table or recycled date, if you want to call it that. And that I will default to, where's my default value? Right there, equals now. Okay, what else we need in here? How about the username, right? It'd be nice to know who deleted it. I'll show you how to get that in just a minute. Um, the table name, what table was it deleted from? The record ID, which will be a number, that'll be the primary key of that table. So if it's customer ID, it'll be a customer ID. If it's, you know, contacts, it'll be a contact ID. And then, of course, the record data, which can be a lot, including long text fields. So this itself has to be long text. So is this table going to be very optimized for searching it? No, not really. You can. But the, the point of this is you got a repository where you can go back and, and find the information if it's deleted and you need it. Let's save this as my recycle bin table. Primary key, yep. All right, save it, close it. And now we're ready to go back into our code. Let's go back to our customer form. Go into the code for this button here. All right, so instead of message boxing that record string, we're gonna do some stuff. We're gonna drop it into that table. So set RS bin, our recycle bin, equals db dot open record set. What do we open up? The recycle bin t. Okay, rs bin dot add new. We're gonna add a new record. And then when you're done adding a new record, what do you do? rs bin dot update. And then rs bin dot close. And set rs bin equals nothing. All right, close everything up when you're done with it. Okay, now in the middle here, this is where we put our data in there. Now you can set the deleted date here if you want to. We have it defaulting in the table, that's up to you. The username, RS bin username, how do you get that? Well, that's an environment variable. Environment variable username. I got a whole separate video on how that works. Basically, you're getting the username of the person on the computer logged into Windows. It's not 100% secure because it can be spoofed or changed, but generally speaking, it's good enough for most office environments. Here's a video that des describes this in a lot more detail if you wanna learn more. And of course, if you really wanna lock your system down, I've got a whole security seminar. I'll put a link to that down below as well. This thing covers just about everything. All right, so we know the username, the RS bin table name is going to be, whoops, is going to be customer T. The RS bin record ID is going to be whatever's in the customer ID field on the form that we're on, okay? And the RS bin record data, the long text field is going to be that string we just made, record string, okay? Yeah, you can use a width in there if you like to use width. I, I don't use width that often unless I got really long names I'm dealing with. I don't know, I think it's just easier to write this way. That's personal preference though. Now, when we're all done with this, we can then delete the record that's on the screen. I like to do it with SQL. That's just my preference. So I'm going to go, well, we could do it before the DB is released. We can say DB dot execute delete from customer T where customer ID equals the customer ID on the screen, all right? And when we're all done with all of this, we can close the form or requery the form, whatever you want to do. I, it's up to you. I'm gonna, let's, let's requery the form. It'll put you back at the first record. So we'll say me, because we're in the customer form now, me.requery. 
Otherwise, you'll be sitting on a deleted record. It'll say deleted everywhere. Okay. All right. Let's give it a shot. Save it. Debug compile once in a while. Close it. Open it. Let me delete myself or recycle myself. You ready? All right. Are you sure you want to send this record to the recycle bin? Yep. Okay. I'm gone. Look at that. 132. Let's check our recycle bin. Oh, look. There I am. All right. Deleted date. Username is Amaker. Don't ask. My computer's name is Amaker. It's short for Amicron. I don't know why they did that. Customer ID or customer T ID one. And then here's the data. And if we click on that and go, uh, hey, let me do this. Let me make this a little bit bigger. You can see it's all in there. See, there's all that. Whoops. Way too big. Resize. See, there's all the stuff that was in that record. Okay, let's do another one. Let's go find, I don't know. Let's do, oh wait, Tashi R. <laughs> let's recycle Tashi R. She's gone anyways. Click. Are you sure? Yep. Boom. That's gone down to 31. Check the recycle bin. There she is right there. Okay. Beautiful. So now you got a place for all your dead soldiers to go when you recycle them. All right. Now, this is working great. Okay. But as you'll notice when we built this thing, it's very specific to the customer form. Right, and a lot of places in here, we got customer T, customer ID, customer ID, right, customer here. I wanna make this so it'll work on any form. So literally all I have to do is drop this button onto a form, change a few parameters, right? We'll use an event handler for this. So instead of having code under this button, we'll use a function in here, right? It's called an event handler function where you can make a function, stick it in here. We'll have to put a few parameters in there. We'll change the parameters. We'll put the name of the table and the, the form and stuff in here. And then it'll work on any form we drop it into. And we'll cover that in tomorrow's video. So once again, tune in tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. You know the drill. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because I'm going to keep recording. But there you go. That's part two. Now you got a fully working recycle bin for your customer table. And if you're happy with that, you can stop there. Tomorrow, we're going to make it more modular. So we can literally drop that button into any other form we want, change a few parameters in the button, and then it's good to go. Okay? So I'll see you back tomorrow for part three. That's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. See you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor 
and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.